Morning. How are you? It's Christo here on Talk TV. Uh, I'm with you till 7 o'clock. We've been talking about whether celebrities should discuss the migrant crisis, which has got us talking about free speech and whether a celebrity um, highlighting an issue may be that a good thing. Uh, but we'll probably discuss it a bit more now. We'll also talk a little bit as well about Rishi saving the high street this hour. Um, more outrage at 20 mile per hour limits and HS2 as well. So there's lots on the menu for us to discuss all here live on Talk TV. And now joined in the studio by the leading, talented, handsome, wonderful criminal defence lawyer. Contractually, I have to say that for you to appear, don't I? Can we get a few more accolades in there? No, that's enough. It's Paul Britton. Hello, Paul Britton. Good morning. Now, let's talk about Elton John. Now, Suella Braverman is saying, don't lecture us from Saint-Tropez on migrants, Elton. No. Um, well, <laughs> basically, Suella Braverman says, yeah. um, basically, that uh, the likes of Elton John's Gary Lineker, they're members of a virtue-signalling elite, and that they shouldn't lecture the public on things like the migrant crisis. Essentially, the point she's making is, look, these people <laughs> live in their ivory towers, they live in incredibly privileged lives, they don't uh, get the effects of... Um, the migrant crisis okay. themselves, so they have no right to pontificate about how ruthless or how immoral they think the government might be being in their policy. What do you make about that? OK, well, she uh, should not be trying to fetter the freedom of speech. Um, and if celebrities want to talk about these things, they should be allowed to. They're in, in the public eye. Article 10... Um, says that uh, uh, we have to protect our democracy and a fundamental part of our democracy is the freedom of speech. So for her to say that celebrities, just because of where they've reached in life, shouldn't have an opinion or voice it is wrong. Well, I mean, but, but isn't she also just voicing her opinion? She's not saying... Look, I want to legislate for them not to be able well, to speak, but I just think that they should shut up because they don't, they're hypocrites. Okay, I mean, isn't so, that fair? So it's very different to putting your opinion forward, that's one thing, but telling other people to shut up and not have an opinion or not voice their opinion, that's wrong. Yeah, she apparently said, uh, pampered out-of-touch celebrities um, in this no-holds-barred interview, we are seeing out-of-touch pampered elites lecturing us on how we should think... Or is there a slight hypocrisy about there? I mean, very serious issues... Look at her lifestyle and her aff income and... ...affecting the majority of British people, such as illegal immigration, yeah. illegal migration. These people don't have to wait in a queue to see a GP. They, ju they can just go private. They don't have to worry about trying to afford a car, buy a house. The vast majority of British people are directly affected by the unprecedented scale of illegal migration. My job is to think of them first, ahead of a virtue-signalling elitist view from Hollywood It's Central. just, it's spiteful. As you read through that, I just thought the spite... And no, I, but I see, voice. I also... I also defend no. her right to say that back. Oh, of course she can, but it's uh, it's an opinion, but to tie it into people shutting up. I mean, she talks about them using, celebrities using private health care. Well, that actually takes the burden off the NHS. And if we look at NHS waiting times at the moment, she should be thanking them for that, not criticising them well, for that. Should, but, but I, 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 and I think that's a fair point, but the point is that I'm, I'm for free speech for all, and I'm, I think that if they are allowed to speak up and say, look, mm. she's wrong, she's allowed to speak up and say, well, hang on, what do you you know yeah, but she's defending herself it's the shut up bit don't say it don't have an opinion i mean isn't it isn't yeah, it so, what, so, you're saying, so you're saying the rest of it's okay you can say look you're a hypocrite you don't know what you're talking about but it's the fact that she don't might be right on those points but, but but it's the fact that she's saying don't but just don't lecture the shut us. up is just crossing the line for a politician um for anyone really but but she 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 might have some fair points in there but the problem is when you have intelligent debate and then you start going down the road of telling people to shut up and not have an opinion, well, it just, you just water down your argument and you lose credibility. People aren't going to listen to that. Um, that I think mean, that's fair. Is that fair? I don't know. Because I suppose, again, it ties into where the line is between respectful debate, free speech, versus where the legal line is. Mm. Um, and I don't know whether you've been following the GB News story this week and how across you are the legalities of it. I've been trying to sort of talk people through the minefield of, of Ofcom mm. and what, it, what your obligations are 
if you're a broadcaster. And we just heard it before the break. So someone came on and, and, and made an accusation about Suella Braverman just before the news, and I had to say, you, you know, you can't say that. She's not here to defend herself, you know. Um, you know, some people would say that, that what she's doing is the precise opposite. Mm. It's my job to shut that down um, because... Um, Legally, we're on dodgy ground by making that kind of accusation against against someone. I also feel morally you need to do that as well if they're not here to defend themselves. Um, in that context, what do you make of what's gone on at GB News this week? And if you, I mean, as lawyers, we deal with we deal with defamation law, we deal with privacy law, with with defamation. If there are there are available defences, and one is well that it's true. So that's obviously the best defence. If you say something, it causes someone damage, but it's true. That would be your first defence. But then we move to a reasonable belief. So you may have you may be able to prove that you had a reasonable belief in what you were saying. If it's in the papers, if you've read it online, if broadcasters have aired it, then you might have a reasonable belief in what you're saying. Um, what you've said is already in the public domain would be a third one. So it's already out there. I'm not saying anything new. So, so then if we talk about the Lawrence Fox... Um, comments to, to Dan Wooten on GB mm. News, where um, you know he went sort of from reasonable critique of what Ava Santina had been saying about male suicide and how she shut down. I don't, do you know? Do you know the story no, of how that was, came about? Said verbatim. So, so uh, what happened with the story was that um, during the day, Ava Santina had been on Politics Live with um, uh, the comedian Jeff Norcott. Right. And Jeff Norcott was talking on the show about how he would like to see a minister for men. And right. um, uh, because of the fact that and he was talking about the crisis in mental health among men mm. and the suicide rate among men. And Ava um, responded by saying, well, look, I think that, that you're sort of potentially feeding into the culture wars with that. And then when he mentioned the suicide rate of men under 50 and how what a crisis that is and it is a mm. massive crisis she said well look that's because women aren't as successful and i mean it could be construed that she was very dismissive of those suicide figures some people were saying she was smirking when it was being said i'm not sure she completely was but anyway that's what they were debating then on gb news that this Ava is, they were calling it sort of a far-left activist who was smirking regarding a suicide debate. Lawrence Fox went on Dan Wooten's show to discuss that and was saying, look, you know, this is feminism gone mad, you know, making men, you know, dismissing the mental health of men because you claim to be a feminist is completely wrong. Or, to me, that's all reasonable. I mean, whether you agree or disagree, that's all reasonable. But then he went further and said... Um, that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, who on earth would want to that? As Them, in... Themselves. Have sex with that. Oh, God, OK. I didn't say that word. He said the word that remind, rhymes with hag. OK. Um, who on earth would want to that? I mean, my if I if she, if I met her in a bar and she spoke to me like that, I tell you something, I would turn well, around. I'm and go, sure someone would, and you know, there's someone for everyone. But yes, yeah, and so and and that was and and the problem with that's a that, step too far. Again, and then, and it comes the, back to the point while I say about diluting your argument. But Dan, then, and I'm look, I'm I, I get on it. with Dan. He didn't encourage it, but he giggled. Okay. And he didn't do what, as a broadcast, you're supposed to do if someone says something that can be reasonably perceived as sexist okay. and step in and say, you really can't say that. Right. She's not here to defend herself and actually you're, you're straying from the argument itself and there might be some people who are watching that who would be quite offended by it. So are you going to retract it or are we going to sort of end this conversation? He didn't do any of that. No. Um, he sort of... Uh, 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 I think he was a bit taken aback. He giggled a little bit and... Um, that's where all of this uproar has come. So in th the point I'm making is that wasn't, I guess, defamation, because he wasn't saying that she is a, a liar a or a racist or anything, in. but and maybe he has a reasonable belief in it, but obviously it was it was construed as sexist because okay. it was bringing in her looks and her, her and, and how much he might want to sleep with her mm. based on her opinion, which is sexist, I would say. So... Um, are you surprised why... Obviously, you will have seen some of the uproar this week about it. That's all the context of it for you. From a legal perspective, are you surprised at some of the uproar about it? Uh, I don't think he's broken any laws, although they are looking at legislating and bringing law in laws to protect from 
misogynistic comments. Um, but he's poor, but he, uh, but I would have thought he probably broke the broadcasting code, right. though. Well, they're rules, they're not laws, and you would know those better than I would. Um, I mean, clearly from what you've said this morning, you would have jumped on that and stopped it. Yes, that that because, because well, I would hope I would. So an alarm bell would have rung straight Sometimes, away. Sometimes, I mean, in Dan's defence, he was because he could tell where the conversation was going, he picked up his iPad and started scrolling through it to try and find some tweets from her because she then sent a tweet later in the day saying that she had regretted her reaction. So, in fairness, he did try and mitigate the accusation that she was being... By balancing quite, by, the by, argument. But, 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 but whilst he was doing that, that's when Lawrence Fox came out with the outrageous comment about not wanting okay. to sleep with her. And... You know, and sometimes when you're doing a live show, you're sort of you're you're nodding and you're listening, but you're you're also thinking about something else, screen, and, it, yeah. and it doesn't always go in. So, in his defence, um, in Dan Wooten's defence, in Dan Wooten's defence, um, you know, he 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 was sort of looking at his iPad at the time, but what he didn't do was jump in and and who would who would Ofcom look at the broadcaster? Okay, they would look at the broadcaster and they would say. Um, why wasn't um, either an apology given, why wasn't that comment shut down, um, and also then they would have the ability to potentially fine the Ofcom channel would. as well, Ofcom would, which obviously, you know, for a broadcaster to be fined, you know, depending on how serious the breach is. Yeah. Um, but also Ofcom, I bet it could be thousands of pounds. Um, and so um, it's... it's, it's it, but also, as well, again, in Dan's defence, because I'm not trying to do a hatchet job here, I'm just trying to sort of outline what the issue is, um, that's also a producer issue. You know, mm. a producer should be saying, you need to stop this now, you need to shut this in down your in your ear. Yeah. Um, some be I don't need that, well, from, generally, from an, from but a, some I, people do. <laughs> I can think of it from an em employment context. Um, I would be asking what, what training Dan has had... Um, and that's that's probably why Ofcom look at the news channel as opposed to the individual because they will be joint and severably liable. So I'd be saying, what training has he had, and has he had enough? Um, and that would probably be an aggravated feature. If and, and also, what training the the team had had. I mean, well, that's right. In, yeah. Again, in their defence, it's a young channel. I think they've got quite a high staff turnover. I think a lot of people started. GB News. But from what you're saying, this is a this is a fundamental part of your training, and that you would have stopped it. So where did you learn that? Um, I learned it via um, well, a, a, a few places. I yeah. mean, I learned it via the training as a journalist and the, the basics of media law. All of it. But media channels need to weigh up the cost of those fines against the cost of actually giving broadcasters proper training. I, I agree. I and if they are agree. going to be fined. What's the largest fine you've heard of? I've heard of hundreds of thousands. Right. Well, of then it's, surely it's more sensible that you have regular training that it's recorded, um, and something like that is, and is it, rolled it, it, out across it, the board. It depends on the breach. I think the biggest fine that I've heard of was what? again when you actually stray into the illegality, mm. and that was those are things like the contempt of court. Okay. And so when there's an ongoing case, that, there's an ongoing there's a case. charge being made, and someone starts talking about the case in, a, in, a, in a way that is not factual, and it could prejudice the yes. jury yes. because they would read it. Or sometimes, as well, we get advisories from um, either judges or Ofcom and things like that. And again, yeah. this, this, this you might not be aware of this if you're a viewer, but for instance, um, I don't know. Let's take a case like. Uh, uh, Russell Brand. Mm. A few days before Russell Brand, it might be announced that the Met Police actually are going to probably investigate it. We might get a notification to say, actually, um, although no charges have come, you need to start treading carefully because it, th they might be coming. That's right. And, and the tool by which I think a broadcaster would be fined is Ofcom for that. Yeah. I remember there's a really famous case of, um, it was during the Soham trial. Do you remember the Ian Huntley trial oh, yeah. with Holly and Jessica? Mm. There was a radio station uh, uh, in the north somewhere. It was a breakfast show. It was weird because it was a breakfast show like on a music station and it was one of those sort of personality-based breakfast shows. Mm. And uh, Ian Huntley had just given his defence and uh, put forward his defence and it was 
the defence, which of course everyone was rolling their eyes at, thinking this is absolutely ridiculous. That, that if you remember rightly, he 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 pled not guilty to pleaded not guilty to murder, and said that one of them, one of Holly or Jessica, had drowned in the bath, and he tried to save them, while uh, because she, and then the other one screamed, and he put his hand over the mouth, and then she died as well. So it was all like the, his defence was that it was all this terrible big accident, which was clearly massively implausible. implausible yeah. and the breakfast show of this radio station did a whole like, oh my word, how on Unbelievable was that what a load of old rubbish. God, his defence is stupid. My God, she slipped in the bath. What a load of rubbish during the trial. And a jury does go home at night. And a jury And that'll be all over the news channels. And they will too. find a fortune, yeah. I think, if I remember rightly, because the the that is essentially contempt of court because the rules are that if there are proceedings that are active, meaning right. that there are charges or a court case is in is in progress, then the only thing as a broadcast you're allowed to do until a verdict has been reached is um, talk about it in factual terms, i.e. this person's been charged, the court date is this date, when court proceedings are happening you can report on what happened in court. You'll notice sometimes on Mail Online or other websites when there is a case that they are... Um, uh, 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 they'll be reporting on a case about, uh, I don't know, someone being charged for a stabbing, and you'll notice the comments are turned off. And the reason for that is the precise same reason, mm. because they can't have people online speculating, going, well, I think he's guilty, well, I think he's not guilty at all, what a load of rubbish. But the comments will be back on once a verdict begins. And that switches off straight as, um, you'll often see news stories where people are being looked for and they're on the run, and then suddenly... It's all turned off. Yes. And you see no more news. It's because they've been charged. It's, yeah, and that's it. Yeah, and then you can't charge, talk and about it, it anymore. And, and, I, and I think it's actually it. really worth people knowing that yeah. and knowing that sometimes what you might think of is, you know, shutting down free speech. There are actually laws and procedures and codes of conduct around these things that need to be respected. And that doesn't necessarily mean you're trying to shut down free speech. You just can't have the free speech at that moment. You, you've got to wait to have it uh, down the line. All right. Um, when we come back, um, we'll talk a little bit more about this. It's interesting. We've got some fines, actually, that you've come up with. Uh, Johnny's put them on the screen, so we'll talk about those. But we'll also talk as well about uh, these 20-mile-per-hour limits and HS2 and uh, how they tie into each other, all coming up next on Talk TV. Talk TV.